Glass from SSW TV. I'm here with John Papa at the uh, Pluralsight Author Summit in Salt Lake City in Utah. We're in this gorgeous hotel. I don't know if you can see the background, but it's just absolutely stunning. Uh, thanks for taking time out to talk to us, John. Uh, I'm going to pick your brain on uh, something that maybe a lot of developers have heard of, but maybe not know what is or what they can really do with it. Uh, it's Gulp JS. And I know very little about it, but I want to pick your brain on it because I think you have a bit of an interest in the subject. So what is Gulp? I do. I do have an interest in it. And it's odd because a couple of years ago, if you'd asked me about what Gulp represents and the build automation, basically, for JavaScript, I'd be like, Shh, you know, <laughs> falling asleep over yeah. here. But what's happened, like with most things, is just because something's new and hot and has a cool name uh, doesn't mean you should get into it. So let's talk about, do you have these problems? For example, when you're coding, do you, when you do JavaScript, do you need to minify the code? Do you need to compress it? Do you need to use ng annotate for Angular? Uh, how about turning less or SAS into CSS? Yes. What about scanning your code for uh, JS hint or JSCS? Uh, do you have unit tests that you want to run? Um, all these little things that you need to do your, to your code. Mm. Now, some editors will do them for you, some of them, but not all of the features. Yep. And how do you make sure that before you check your code in that all that stuff happens, that nobody's made a mistake and forgotten? Uh, like recently I saw some code where I saw seven copies of Angular in the actual final compressed file. Only seven? Well, they figured seven's better than one, so. Um, so these things happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's real life that we live in. But how do you stop that? Mm. So the great thing about Gulp is it gives us a vehicle to prevent all that from happening and to automate all those menial tasks. So we just press a button or type a command or we hook it into Git or TFS so it runs the command and it'll run through all of our code and make sure that all the rules we have, mm -hmm. and there's plugins for all these things, where you can say, you know, check it for JS hint, JS lint, JS CS, do my less to CSS, put source maps in my code, uh, even things like, uh, have you used Web Essentials with Visual Studio? Uh, yes. Do you know the feature they had where you could automatically put in vendor prefixes for CSS? So Opera, Safari, Chrome. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean now, yeah. So, because they're different sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to remember those, right? What a pain. <laughs> Well, tools like Web Essentials would do it for you, but yep. you have to remember to go in and do it. Cool. There's actually plugins in Gulp that'll just run through your code, read the same database that Web Essentials uses, and put it into your code for you, uh, wow. which is fantastic because sometimes the browsers change and they no longer need them. Yep. So depending on when you run them, it'll do it for the current day. Uh, but these things, it keeps up for it for you. So it also answers the question of, John, how do you keep up with all the changing technology? Well, in some ways, I don't have to because I run Gulp and it just makes sure that <laughs> happens. So getting back to what is Gulp, mm. Gulp is a way to alleviate hours of my day so I don't have to deal with this stuff, yep. and it just works. So you can do the fun thing like coding instead of code. you know, bother you know, setting up deployment processes and everything. Absolutely, and it's, it's not just deployment. We talked about that, but it's also running unit tests. Yep. Uh, I use it for another cool feature, which I really like, and that sometimes I have to test applications while I'm coding. Meaning, and I don't mean unit tests, I mean just make sure things are working. Yeah. Let's say you're writing some code in Angular or something else, and as you're writing the HTML and the CSS and the JavaScript, you want it to automatically show up in the browser mm. as it's changing. Mm. Well, you can set it up such that when you press save in your editor, Gulp can be running, and it can automatically see those changes, detect them, restart your node server, yeah. restart your browser, and inject them Jeez. automatically. And uh, it's really great because you can, and I set it on a one second delay because sometimes I save twice, <laughs> but it's you can do server. that. Well, yeah, because it's, it's awesome. And uh, it also do things that are really great for, I'm not a great CSS guy, so it solves the problem for me of, I'm editing my CSS in Chrome because I want things to look better and uh, behave the right way, especially mm -hmm. for responsive. And then I have to take those settings and save them in Chrome and pull them over to my browser and yeah. to my editor. What this does for me is through Gulp and a tool called Browser Sync that mm -hmm. plugs into it, it automatically refreshes. Well, there's a setting in there for CSS where it says, let's say you're typing and you're changing yellow to red to purple. As you change those and press save, Gulp will detect that change. And instead of restarting and injecting the whole thing in the browser, mm -hmm. it says, it's just CSS. Let me just detect that CSS file and just inject that. So it uses sockets to say, go to the browser. The browser doesn't refresh at all. Just the CSS file flips out, and you immediately see the changes. So it's a way that you can use your editor, Sublime, Brackets, Visual Studio, whatever you want, 
make changes and automatically see them in the browser. And the final thing I just absolutely love with it is, you just say you're doing multiple testing, meaning it has to work in Safari, Firefox, Chrome, uh, phone emulator. Mm. You could open up all those on your screen and make code changes and run it through Gulp, and it'll run all, all four. And then let's say you want to make sure it works the same. So if you press a menu button to go to the second page, yeah. maybe a customer details, on one of the browsers, all four browsers will flip to that. So it's called no, that is sync. That is pretty slick. It's really, really awesome. Um, and it just saves a ton of time. It's not about anything you couldn't do on your own. Gulp is about things that you do right now that are a pain in the butt. that just take time. I mean, how often do you press save and press F5? All the time. I don't do that anymore. It's just save, it's there, save, it's there. And it's, uh, you know, hundreds of times a day. And it saves me 10 seconds here, 10 seconds there. Uh, and it adds up and it allows me to keep my mind contextually in my problem as opposed to figuring out how do I make this stuff now show up over here. So is that uh, open source? Is that something anyone can get? Yep, it's completely open source. Uh, there's also a dueling uh, strategy called Grunt. So there's Grunt and there's Gulp. Uh, there's also Broccoli and Brunch. There's some crazy names out there, man. Um, Grunt, Grunt and Gulp are the two that we recommend generally. And they're, they're both great. Mm -hmm. It's not there can be only one. It's not Thunderdome. Sure. Uh, but <laughs> Grunt's been around longer, and it's, uh, it's config. So I generally find people like Grunt who prefer to change config files, like JSON files. Uh, so non-developers are more drawn to that, too, like mm -hmm. a CI/CD team who maybe doesn't have as much dev experience um, and just wants a set config. Yeah. But if you like to write code and you want to see it that way, it's, I find it's easier to read and write gulp because it's just, you know, pull in my file, process the file, output the file. Um, and it's very simple to do. So someone that had a, had a slightly different workflow might find one or the other better. Exactly. Than, yeah, okay, well, that's cool. Um, so why is everybody not using this? I think a lot of it is, it depends where your experience is. So if you come from a JavaScript web background, uh, and a lot of these younger guys are, they do all this manually, and they kind of naturally lead into Grunt and Gulp because they have that problem. Uh, if you come from a Java or a PHP or a uh, .NET background, some of those tools do these things for you. Mm. Like, think about .NET, because that's my experience. Yep. And what we've got is we've got something that already compiles and builds and minifies. It's called the build system. That's right. <laughs> it does that. Mm -hmm. But in JavaScript, we don't have that out of the box because there's so many ways you can do it. Yep. So this provides that avenue that we had out of the box with .NET. Another reason people don't get into it is that like tools like Visual Studio and WebStorm will try to abstract over top of it, uh, so you can do it through uh, the visual editor. Right. So Visual Studio 2005 has features now where you can actually call Grunt or Gulp, and it gives you a little menu of all the commands you can run, and you can hook it into run after your build, so you press compile and it yep. does it for you. Uh, so in some ways, you don't have to know as much about it, depending upon your tool, uh, but even Microsoft and these Java folks are all starting to embrace this methodology, because if you have a web front end, you have this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, you do not want to deliver seven angulars to your client. <laughs> Please. So is this something that you can set up for a team? So always it's something that everybody has to do on their own? Yeah, that's a great question. So the teams I work with, generally they will we'll set up a grunt or a gulp file, depending on what their flavor they want to choose is. And it's usually a couple hundred lines of code because it's you know a lot of different tasks. And it's all like functions that are like six lines of code long. They're not big. But they all do very discrete tasks. And then you put that in source control and usually into a generator for a project mm -hmm. using Yeoman or T4 templates or T3 right. templates, uh, things like that. And everybody gets that. So when you get your project, you've got this pre-configured grunt or gulp file. Yep. Uh, and usually what I do is I leave that file alone where it's very generic and I point to a small config file where where's my folder paths, you know, sure. which steps do I want to run. Mm -hmm. and usually it's a very small list of config. So your folder structure, my folder structure might be different, but I can change those folder paths and it works. Yeah. So how, how do I learn about this? Is there a good way to learn about Gulp? That's a great way to ask. <laughs> uh, so at Pluralsight, I actually just put out a course on how do you use Gulp with JavaScript. Uh, and it's got 18 different modules in it that are all about 10 minutes long okay. uh, to show you each thing that you can do. So it's, I try to make it easy for, if you don't care about testing, mm. skip the testing yeah. module. If you want to learn about how to do CSS and uh, less, go check that module out. So it's bite-sized. It is very bite-sized. Fantastic. Now, I'm just trying to think of if, if I applied Gulp to an existing project, what would be some of the things that I had to look out for? Like, I can see new project, Greenfield, ah, fantastic, I'll set it up. But that's not what a lot of devs are working on. 
so can I just grab it and put it into my current project? Will it just work? Absolutely. And in fact, it's probably where you find the most benefit. Because if you've got an existing project and you probably wouldn't be looking at Gulp unless you had this problem where how do I do, how do I run unit tests? How do I run my JS hinting? How do I automatically check code in? Because you can do that. Um, I run open source projects and it'll automatically bump the version up for me. Sometimes you have to change like five files to yeah. <laughs> the package JSON, the Bower JSON, the change log. So I wrote a little task in Gulp to do all that for me. Uh, think of it like PowerShell yeah. in a way, you know? So it's, it's that easy to do? It is that easy to do. That's fantastic. So yeah, I can't see a reason why you wouldn't use it if you are in the JavaScript world. I guess if you're building a, you know, an MVC or, or a web API, or even web API, that would work with, with the Angular you're front end. Apps, That's so. right. Um, but I'm thinking... There, what, like, um, sorry, the one thing I really want to point out is that with Node, some people aren't as familiar with Node. Mm -hmm. This is a great, easy way to get into Node, because okay. Gulp runs on Node, mm -hmm. but you don't have to run your app on Node. No. So you could still run on ASP.NET MVC, or you can run on you know Java and Spring if you want to, or PHP. You can leave all that alone um, and not change, but just use Node on Windows or a Mac, uh, and install just Grunt or Gulp, and just to do your CI build pipeline. That's awesome. No, I, I I can't think of any reason why I wouldn't use it. Like it's just the way you present it makes it seem really quite simple. Obviously, there's a learning curve as with anything, sure. but I don't. Is there a reason you wouldn't use Gulp if you're in doing a web um, front-end um, development? Absolutely not. I, I, since I've learned how to use Grunt and Gulp, there's, I can't imagine going back and doing these things on my own. Wow. It's just people say to me, why can't I just right-click inside Visual Studio and do this? That solves one of those things. Mm. That's right. you can. That's I can right-click on 20 things, too. And, and even the guys in that team have said, you know, well, these things are great, and we'll leave these features there, but there's, the community has embraced this build pipeline concept. So they are uh, working in all these into the tools. So you can run like Karma to run your unit test, uh, Yeoman, uh, generators, so you can run generators, Grunt or Gulp, so you can run your build pipeline. Uh, all this stuff runs on Node, and the tooling companies are like, you know what, we don't have to do, let's invent our own. Hmm. The community's already adopted what the best practice is. Yeah. Let's just allow our tooling to run that. That's fantastic, and that's, and that's a good point, is that a lot of the large companies that traditionally has sold you know, components or mm -hmm. systems or whatever you needed, uh, tools, will now embrace what the community has. They'll probably put their own wrapper or their own sure. interface or something to it, but they are, in, in essence, just using what's already there. And that's a great point, is like in Visual Studio, Microsoft, they've, they've basically just put their interface on top of it, mm -hmm. so you, and you can still type directly. They're not hiding anything from you. They're just making it easier, mm -hmm. and they put in their own flavor, as you mentioned, yeah. where after their build process, you can put a hook in to say, after I build, run this gulp task. Yeah. Or before I build, yeah. run this yeah. gulp task. Now oh, that's fantastic. Now that's great. So if you don't know gulp, go and find out. And what's the best way to find out? Gulp.js or something like that? I think it's gulpjs.com, or you can check out my uh, course, which I think is jpapa.me slash gulpps. There you go. There's no excuse now. Thanks for your time, John. Appreciate it. And uh, you must get on with your busy schedule. Thanks, guys. This is the last from SSW TV. Have a good one. Did you get all that? We'll take the SSW TV quiz and test your knowledge now.